Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today we're going to be talking all about what do you do with the gap between two double doors, communicating doors, or two windows in a double wall system. A lot of people have asked me about this, so today I'm going to teach you exactly what I do with all of my clients when I design studios with double doors and double windows. Before we jump in, if you're on this journey and you want to build your own studio, definitely check out my soundproofing workshop. This is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching, and it teaches you everything you need to know from start to finish of how to go about approaching your home recording studio build. You can check that out right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to decouple communicating doors and windows in a double wall system. All right, to start with, many of you probably know what a double wall is, but I'm just gonna go over it very quickly for those who maybe have, are not familiar with it. So you can see in this diagram here that the best way that I like to soundproof my walls is always with this system. It's a double wall system, meaning we have a two by four stud wall on one side, a two by four stud wall on the other side, and a one inch air gap in the middle, making sure they're not touching. And then we put insulation, as you can see, I said cheap insulation, so the cheapest insulation you can find the better, just to dampen the resonances in the wall cavity. And then two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on one side and two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on the other. And this is a great system. But when you put a door or a window through this wall, things get complicated because suddenly you have an air gap and you don't want to cross that air gap, so what do you do? Let's start with communicating doors. Now, communicating doors are the best type of soundproof door, and honestly, I don't design studios with single doors pretty much anymore at all. Um, communicating doors, two doors are way better. And what you do is you have a door built on one wall, like we saw in the last diagram, and then another door built on the inside wall. And ideally, neither doors or the door frames touch each other, leaving that gap between the two walls intact, making it so sound can't transition from one wall to the other. But many people get confused here because they're like, well, I can't just have a gap in my wall. That'll look terrible. And like, how does that work? And can't sound get into the gap if I leave it open at the door or the window? All of this is a very good point. So what do we do with that gap in between our doors? The first thing that I do in all my designs is I have the contractor or the builder put in a 16th inch thick piece of rubber that you can get on Amazon or at any local retailer that sells rubber. Now that rubber is gonna span that gap there of eight inches, which is the edge of one stud wall to the edge of the other stud wall. And we're gonna put that rubber all the way around on all three sides of the door to cover up the air gap on all sides. The rubber is not like a piece of wood. The rubber does not conduct sound in the same way that a rigid piece of wood would. So the rubber acts as a soundproofing isolator meaning it will reduce vibrations through the wall. And it has the added benefit of covering up that air gap so you don't get weird odors and stuff that could come in from the air gap. So that is one part of this process. Then the next step is you build your door frames. I build all my door frames from scratch. I don't like to use pre-hung doors because it just doesn't work well for the system. So you build your door frame with your solid core door and before you, you, well, you could hang the second door, but you have your two door frames on either side and you can see in this diagram, there's still that gap with the rubber. So to finish this off, what we wanna do is put in mineral wool insulation. This usually could be 1.6 to three pound per uh, cubic foot of mineral wool density. And the density will help it stay in place. So the higher the density, the more rigid it will be. And you can cut that mineral wool insulation and stick it in that gap between your two frames, door frames in the uh, doorway there. And then you cover that insulation with acoustic fabric. I always recommend using either GIK acoustics fabric that they sell in both the United States and Europe, or uh, Guilford of Maine, if you're in the United States, is really high end and great acoustic fabric. If you can't get either of those, you can always go to your local fabric store and test it by just blowing through the fabric and see if you can feel the air on the other side of the fabric. If so, it should be good enough for allowing sound to pass through the fabric. So we are going to cover that door frame area with the rubber in insulation and acoustic fabric, thus making it look clean and nice. 
but it also adds a second benefit, which is because you're using insulation, it actually absorbs the resonant frequencies that are gonna be bouncing around inside that chamber when both doors are closed. This is the same as the insulation that is in our double wall system. As you can see, the double door system is much like the double wall system, wall system, except that we can pass through it. So we're trying to create the exact same system as the double wall system, and the insulation helps with the absorption of frequencies and thus helps with isolation overall. Now, let's talk about soundproof windows. Honestly, it's pretty much the same exact thing with a very small, slight tweak. So let's say you're starting with your rough opening for a soundproof window. First thing you do, you guessed it, you're gonna add in the rubber, the same rubber you used for your door rough opening. You're gonna put it around all four sides of your window. And this, again, serves the exact same purpose. It will help to close up that gap and use a substance like rubber that does not transmit sound easily. Next, same thing, you frame in your custom windows. So custom framing is what I always do with my clients when we do non-operable, meaning non-opening windows. And then you'll have the gap once you put your framing in, so you'll know exactly what that gap is. Same thing, take the uh, mineral wool with the you know three pound density per cubic foot, let's say, and we'll put it in that spot there. We can use construction adhesive if it's really not staying in place. Otherwise, we just push it into place and it holds in with friction and then we cover that with the acoustic fabric. And the acoustic fabric, you can just staple in with construction staples. And if you can't hide the staples easily, you can put a piece of trim to cover up that. How you do all this, how you attach it all is, is part of the fun of the process. There's a million ways to do it, but the main thing is to remember not to couple the two walls together with a piece of wood or metal or anything rigid that would conduct sound between the two walls. So that's it. Pretty simple, right? But if you don't know how to do this, it seems really daunting. So if you follow this method and you do everything I said to a T, I guarantee you will have great soundproof doors and soundproof windows, and you will hold the integrity of your double wall system through the entire process. All right, if you found this little tidbit of information helpful, definitely check out that soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. I look forward to teaching you all about soundproofing and room acoustics next week. Every Monday, there's a new video. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.